All right, so we're going to find, now put everything together. We're going to find the period, and we're going to find our tick marks of the following. So again, the directions are, determine the period and tick marks of the following. Then graph the function. So we've talked about K, we've talked about finding period, we've talked about finding new tick marks, and now we're going to go ahead and put all that together with graphing. All right, so here, the first thing is, what is K equal? K is 2. Okay, so if K is 2, to find that period, we do 2 pi over K, which is 2 pi over 2, and that reduces down to just pi, because our 2's cancel out, and we're left with just the pi. Okay, now here, we're going to go to our new tick marks. Remember, we have to remember the old tick marks and then divide everything by K. So right now, the old tick marks first. Uh, two, yeah, two pi. So that's the original tick marks there. And we divide them again by K. And here our K is two. Each one of those by the K. Alright, again, when it comes to it, there's work to be done here, so we can't simplify that down. It's not simplified yet. There's work to be done here because we have a fraction and a whole number. There's nothing to be done here, it's just a whole number and a whole number, so we can keep that one as it is, so we don't have to worry about that work. We need to work on this one, and we need to go ahead and work on that. So here, Let's go ahead and look at this first one. 0 divided by 2, it just comes back to just 0. I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to come back to it. Pi divided by 2 is just pi over 2. That doesn't change. And then here, the 2's cancel out again, so we're left with just pi. Right, and again here, these parts we're going to have to do keep change flip. So let's do keep change flip here. So we keep that pi over 2. We change the division to multiplication. And then we flip 2, which makes it 1 over 2. We flip it. Same thing here. 3 pi over 2. We divide, change the division to multiplication. And we flip the 2, so 1 over 2 again. Alright, so then our final answers for this, we have 0 here. Pi times 1 is pi. 2 times 2 is 4. We keep pi over 2. 3 pi times 1 is 3 pi. 2 times 2 is 4. Then we have pi here. Alright, so the last thing is now go ahead and graph it out. Because we found our new tick marks, we found the period, and now we graph them out. But also before we do any type of graphing, because I did point this out in the last video, which is, I don't know why, I don't know why I didn't do that. But if you look at it, this, hap this will happen every time. Whatever your period is, that's always going to match up with the last number in your tick marks. So your period here, and your last tick mark, they're going to always equal each other. Always be the same.
sorry. They will always be the same. <laughs> that same. So the period and the last tick mark will always be the same thing. If you, there aren't, that means you did something wrong and you got to fix it somehow. Alright, so now the last thing is graphing it. And we're still going to pretty much follow the same process here. Let's see. Okay, let's do that. Right, so for number one again, our first step is always to label the graph. So that means here, any type of changes that we make when it comes to um, tick marks or anything of that sort, that, that's where it, what happens here. That's what changes here. So here our tick marks are different, so that means when we label this here, it's going to be different. So we know 0 is still there, so that's still 0. Pi over 4 goes here, pi over 2 is here, 3 pi over 4 is here, and pi is right here now. So if you look at it, everything kind of shrunk because normally our period ends way over here at 2 pi, but now everything's shrunk and it's going to end here at pi. Okay, so not bad. And then let's go ahead and label these parts too. One and negative one. Okay, so we labeled it. Yay. Woo. Well, we see them. We did it. Okay, number two is to graph the parent graph. The parent function. All right, and here our parent function is what? I cannot look at it back at our original. It's sine. So we graph our parent graph. You know, we start going through 0, 0, then it goes up, it comes down, and down, negative 1, and then back up. And it doesn't matter because the tick marks change that the graph changes. It doesn't matter. We follow the same process for a sine function. It didn't change the actual function, so it just stays the same. So just because the graph changed doesn't mean that, just because the tick marks change doesn't mean the graph changes its shape. It follows the same pattern. So that's why it's so important to know what the parent graph looks like. All right, then number three, we said we're going to do our amplitude. For this problem, what is your amplitude? A equals four. Okay, so is that, does that mean that every point moves 4, or does that mean just the ones on the x-axis move 4? What happens? Right, just the things on the x-axis move up 4. You're right. You're perfectly right. So it moves up 4 spots. So, not up 4 spots, sorry. It moves up to the number 4. So when it, with a vertical shift, it moves up four spots, but with amplitude, it moves up to the number four. Anything that's not on the x-axis. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, negative four. So this point moves up to positive four, because it's not on the x-axis. This point moves down to negative four. And then we just go to and these smooth curves with the curves and edges. And that's our sine function. And again, let's go to make sure you put um our um arrows on both sides. And that's part A. Yay!